Greetings people. It's Mr. Pool the Trigger yet again on another episode of the Enlightenment series. So we have reached a different stage on the case of uh, Ruth Matthew versus Jeremiah Omoto for fame. I know the majority of you, all of you, you have been pushing from behind the scenes and you have all been, you know, curious of which direction is this case taking and uh, what have been the developments in as far as the legal aspect is concerned. And the main reason, the major reason why I had not yet much centered on bringing to the public about the legal proceedings is because I was under the, the impression that we are going to put as much pressure as possible on Jeremiah Omoto for Fain paying a blind eye to legal proceedings and allowing the legal proceedings to take their course in the background. And then we just focus on raising awareness and calling out Omoto for Fain and his entire minion uh, department or his entire minion uh, uh, carcass to bring out baby testimony. But based and judging from what we have observed so far, I am sure it is quite clear to everyone, uh, it has been evidenced enough that Omoto for Fane and Mercy City and everyone involved in this abduction syndicate, they are not going to release baby testimony without a fight. They are going to take as many chances as possible to make sure that they don't release this boy without a fight. They will try any single avenue that can be exploited to either not release this boy or to keep trying to find ways in which they can release this boy without them being implicated. So they're literally on crossroads right now. They are not dealing well with this pressure that I am giving them, the pressure that we are all giving them. So the other half, the other part of them is saying, let's release this boy. And the other part is saying, if we release this boy, how well can we stage, manage a sin that will not come back to us? Because one risk that they cannot take, one risk that they cannot take at this particular juncture is releasing the boy without doing a proper analysis of the effects of it without doing a is it cost benefit analysis of how much this will get back to them so they're trying as much as possible to be careful in holding on to baby testimony and not releasing him anytime soon so that they can find a proper avenue to release him without which will not connect them to this abduction syndicate. This can be evidenced with all the damage controls that they have been trying to do over the past months. The past months, all that they have been doing, that Omoto has been, has invested so much in trying by all means to make sure that the blame, the eyes are not on him when it comes to this case of baby testimony. And all of them has failed dismally. None of their damage control strategies or tactics have yielded any fruit. All of them were just lame. All of them even exposed them more. I think I'll do an entire episode where I'll do a compilation of all the damage controls that Omoto for Fane has done thus far since 2019 till that so that people can have a bigger picture can also start asking the right questions to say, if this man has nothing to do with this, why would he go this extra mile to try to cover up for something that he is not connected to? There's one thing about the truth, people, that all of you should know, that even Jeremiah Omoto should know. You can never cover up the truth with a lie. The more you try to cover up the truth with a lie, the lie will always be defeated. And you need to come up with a new lie to cover up for the truth and the lie that you tried to cover up the truth with at inception. 
and it becomes you know a something that keeps on going on and on and on you will now be doing damage control against your lies not against the truth anymore because once the truth defeats the first lie you are left with the liability to cover up for the lie that you came up with and you need to come up with as many lies as possible and these lies will never even out because a lie will always need another lie to cover it up or to do damage control on another lie, which never yield any result. You only be left with the burden of coming up with as many lies as possible so that it keeps on going on and going on, trying so much, so hard to prove your in yourself innocent. And whenever you try to prove yourself innocent with lies, you can, it's, it's a cycle that never ends. That's the mistake that Omoto Fofain and his team did. They tried to cover this truth of a baby missing at their shrine with multiple lies. And these, these lies have, have uh, multiplied now. They've come up with multiple lies just to cover one truth that a child went missing at their shrine, that a child went missing at their church. Now, if you do an audit of how many lies have been told so far, by Omoto for Fane and his team, you realize that these people are actually just trying to cover up something that they know for real. Something that they know they are part of. So we have come up to this point when I think that everybody needs to have an idea of where this is coming from and where this is going in the legal framework. Because many people always send me messages. Why not taking this to the International uh, Criminal Court of Justice? Why not taking this, escalating this to a different level? Because people are of the belief that in Nigeria, we can never win this case as long as it is being ruled in Nigeria. Because many are of the belief that Omoto will keep on bribing these people. And what makes this case even worse, the court is in worry. The court is in Jeremiah's state. The court is in Jeremiah's territory. The court in which this case is being uh, presided in, it is in Jeremiah Omoto's territory. And Jeremiah is well connected to all these people. So the chances of us getting justice from a state or from this uh, legal body that is in worry, they are very slim like this. But what makes them, what keeps them accountable is the fact that everything is in the public domain and everyone is watching. That's why I feel the need to bring out all the facts to the public so that everyone knows what is happening, what happened, and we can get so much aid from different other people as to what can be the way forward. What should we do? You know, when many hands are put together, it makes the work even lighter. So there are so many other bodies in government, politicians, that are watching this case, that are observing this case. But not everyone has access to the court proceedings. Not everyone has access to some documents that are considered confidential. So people will never know what are the proceedings. When Ruth Matthew reported this case, what happened? What transpired? What was the judgment? When she reported this case, what did the police do? What investigation did they carry to try to find out what could have happened to baby testimony? And people will be asking, so why is Jeremiah Omoto suing the woman who lost a child? Because it's quite you know, ironic that Ruth Matthew lost a child. A child was abducted at Mercy City. And we are having Omoto for Fane and the commissioner of police suing Ruth Matthew for false accusations, for defamation of character. That's where now I want everyone to come and we analyze this whole thing all together. We started from where it began and then we proceed with caution and then we put everything into detail so that we can hold the Nigerian government accountable. The judges that are presiding over this case accountable the commissioner of police who was presiding over this case or the investigation, the investigative officers who are 
taking charge of this case responsible and accountable. Because if this thing is just being done in the background, these people will take us, will take this case as if it's just one of those cases in which they can take brown envelopes and do their damage control. So by bringing this to the public domain and making sure that everyone knows what's going on, it gives them some sense of accountability. When Omoto tries to persuade them into giving them some, you know, some brown envelopes, they will trade with caution because they know it's not only us that are here. We have some very qualified lawyers out there that are consuming, that are following up on this case. We have some very influential, very prominent men in Nigeria who are following up on this case, who are just waiting to see the direction in which this case is going to go. And I once mentioned this before, that the reason why Omoto Fofein had taken or has Ruth Matthew in court, because the issue that I want you to know is Ruth has been appearing in court ever since. She is on the defensive. She's defending herself against Jeremiah Omoto Fofein. Jeremiah Omoto Fofein is the one now who's being a crybaby who has approached the commissioner of police and in, in the court, it's actually the commissioner of police versus Ruth Matthew. They don't want to put Jeremiah Omoto on the stand. They don't want Jeremiah Omoto to be the one who actually pursue these legal charges of being defamed. So it is the commissioner of police who is coming to say, Ruth Matthew, you are guilty of accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame and Mercy City. But the question is, the biggest question is, when and how did the commissioner of police come up to the verdict that Ruth Matthew is falsely accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame? What investigation did the commissioner of police do that gave them enough facts and figures to come up to the verdict that Ruth Matthew is guilty of falsely accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame? Because from the court papers that are there present, there is no investigation report that came from the commissioner of police which shows the facts and figures or the details of their investigation. That report is nowhere to be found. Hence, they still claim that they found Ruth Matthew to be guilty of lying. Hence, they are taking Ruth Matthew to court. I want you to hold this part uh, strongly and I want you to, if you understand this part, and then you will know that this case of baby testimony is a win-win. Jeremiah Omoto stands no chance. Even the commissioner of police has no case. Because they are claiming, I'll, play, I'll show you the brief summary of the entire court, uh, uh, the entire court structure of this case. Because it is against Ruth, it's Ruth Matthew versus the Commissioner of Police. The Commissioner of Police is saying they did an investigation when Ruth Matthew reported this case to the police. And after they did an investigation, they realized that Ruth Matthew was lying. They realized that Ruth Matthew was falsely accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame and the entire Mercy City. When they realized that, then they are now taking, they arrested Ruth Matthew. And now they are taking Ruth Matthew to court. The commissioner of police, not Omoto in his personal capacity, is actually the commissioner of police that, are, that, that is on the court papers, suing Ruth Matthew, saying that Ruth Matthew, you lied against Jeremiah Omoto for fame. But the question is, the report of their investigation is nowhere to be found. The report that shows that these are the reasons why they think or why they say Ruth Matthew is lying is nowhere to be found. When I say the report of their investigation, I'm looking at these aspects. When Ruth Matthew reported this case to the police, we believe, I believe, the police went to Jeremiah Omoto for fame. They launched an investigation. Because Ruth Matthew mentioned all the people that she's suspecting, that she was suspecting of being part of this abduction syndicate. So when this case was presented to the police in Wari, Ruth Matthew mentioned all the names, Emmanuel Marcus, Matthew Juliet, and some other pastors. 
that are also in the very same document accusing and suing Ruth Matthew for damages. So after this case was received by the police, obviously the police went to a motor for fame and started their investigation to find out what happened to the baby. And of course, in their investigation, they requested for a CCTV footage. It's either, I'm only saying this because this must be the only reason why they could have given the verdict that Ruth Matthew is lying. It's either they were shown the CCTV footage and they actually saw Ruth Matthew selling baby testimony to these women. Or they actually saw something on the CCTV footage that gave them enough evidence for them to come to the verdict that Ruth Matthew is lying. That Jeremiah Omoto is the victim. That's the only way that they can come up to that verdict. But the funny part is, in the court papers, there is no report of their investigation. I hope you understand the point that I'm trying to stress here. There is no report of the commissioner of police's investigation of this case. So how did they come up to the verdict that Ruth Matthew is lying when there is no report of the investigation, when there is no report of the investigation of the case? How did the commissioner of police know that Ruth Matthew is lying? That's the biggest question. Because that report was never there, is not anywhere to be found in the court papers. Because we have all the court papers from the day that Ruth Matthew made the report. We have the statement of Ruth Matthew. We have this, I'm going to put everything, not today, but I'm going to break down everything so that you all understand. Statement of Ruth Matthew, statement of Alfred Ayo, statement of uh, Emmanuel Marcus, the original statements that they made back in 2019. We have the statement of um, uh, Joy, the woman that, wa, that Ruth was, re, was, le, was renting in a hotel room. We have the statement of Jeremiah Omoto for Fain himself. We have the statement of Triumph, Ruth Matthews' uh, son. We have the statement of Emmanuel, Ruth Matthews' son. We have the statement of Juliet, the lady that Ruth Matthews said uh, was in charge of the section of the children. We have all those statements, which are big dated back to 2019. And we are going to be analyzing all those statements so that we can, you also people that are still in doubt, Jeremiah Omoto's followers, so that they can also open their eyes and also help us in analyzing this, in understanding and in getting to the bottom of this issue. And we also want to exploit all the loopholes in this case because the judge is watching here. The board of jury is right here. They are watching. The lawyers of Jeremiah Omoto for fame, they are watching. So we are bringing this to their attention so that they know that they can never have a way out on this case of baby testimony. The only thing that they, could, that, that they can do, the only noble thing that they can do is to do the right thing. Is to also stand for baby testimony's justice. This case of baby testimony, like I told you before, is going to expose quite a lot of things. The corruption that happened when baby testimony was abducted and this case was swept under the carpet. All the police that were involved, they are all there on the record. They will all be explored. And we will know how Jeremiah managed to swindle all this, this entire department of the police so that this case can turn against Ruth Matthew. That's what they did. They turned the whole case against Ruth Matthew and made it seem like Ruth Matthew is the one who knows where she put baby testimony. So that's where we are going to get back at, and that's where we are going to start. So in the next five minutes or ten, I'm just going to read out. I'm not going to read out. I'm just going to present it so that you can have an idea of the structure of the charges that are present in the court, the structure of the entire case. I'll just break it down. I'll compress it in five minutes. You all get the bigger picture, and you all get a perfect understanding of how Jeremiah Omoto managed to make the commissioner of police turn against Ruth Matthew. Because Ruth Matthew is the one that went to the commissioner of police, is the one that went to the police to report that my child is missing, my child was abducted. And how can a complainant all of a sudden becomes the defendant? 
How can a complainant all of a sudden becomes the accused? Because according to the court papers, Ruth is now the one who is being accused of falsely lay defaming or falsely accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame. So as you can see from this screen, we have the full summary of the court paper, which is the entire structure of the court paper, which is keeping Ruth Matthew in court. Because Ruth Matthew is actually the one who is being accused of wronging Jeremiah Omoto for fame. As it reads, the commissioner of police versus Ruth Matthew, female aged 32 years. So this is the proof of evidence as the commissioner of police presents it. Item number one, Inspector Patrick Ugu, the IPO, or any member of his team will give evidence on how they investigated the case that led to the false accusation and deformation in this charge. Item number two, we have Miss Juliet Matthew, who is a witness. And Juliet Matthew, to those of you who do not know Juliet Matthew, is that lady who was in charge of the children's section. And we have Miss Joy Edole, who is also a witness. Miss Joy Edole is uh, the woman who owned the hotel in which Ruth Matthew was, uh, was renting. Then item number four, we have Miss uh, Mr. Elijah F. Mosa is a witness. And we have Pastor Awudu Magada is also a witness. And number six, we have Pastor Emmanuel Marcus, who is also a witness. A witness. So let's stop here. These people that I have mentioned, these people that you see here, all these, uh, are they five? One, two, three, four, five. All these five people, they are all witnesses against Ruth Matthew. But of these five, we have Emmanuel Marcus and we have Juliet Matthew, whose testimonies have already been discarded by the court because when they were cross-examined, it was realized that the child is actually missing and the child actually went missing at Mercy City. After the cross-examination of these two individuals in court, in the recent court appearances, Everything that they said in court was conflicting the statements that they initially gave back in 2019. So recently when the lawyer that is standing for Ruth Matthew was cross-examining them again in court, they were found, all of their statements were found to be inconsistent. So their statement and the charges, because all these five people, they were all laying charges. They are all laying charges on Ruth Matthew for false accusation. So our good lawyer actually managed to put them on the stand, cross-examine them in front of the judge, and he established that there is inconsistency in the presentation of their facts now in court and in the statements that they gave back in 2019. Because what the lawyer wanted to establish was, did the child get missing at Mercy City, yes or no? They confirmed to that. Are you aware of the case of a child missing at Mercy City? They confirmed to that. So everything that they'd accused, previously accused Ruth Matthew in the past was discarded. So we are left with only uh, four, with three witnesses now who are still yet to appear in court. And then we have the second section where we have the exhibits. And the exhibits are the evidence or the or the proofs that shows that uh, there was an investigation that was done by the commissioner of police, which proves that Ruth Matthew is actually guilty or is falsely accusing Jeremiah Omoto for fame. So on the exhibits, these are the documents that are in court that will be analyzed, that are being analyzed in court. The first one, there is a statement of Ruth Ayo, which is dated 27 for 2019. Two, we have an extract from Crime Diary, April Murder Division. Three, we have the picture of the victim, Timoth Ayo. Then four, we have a letter of complaint to the IG, Zone 5, Benin City, dated 29-01-2020. Item five, an application for bail for Miss Joy 
Edole, Pastor, and Magada, and Bail Bond, dated 25-02-2020. Item 6, an application for bail and bond for Ruth Ayo Matthew, dated 18-02-2020. Remember, Ruth was actually arrested in 2020. Together with all these people that I mentioned in the previous who are on items where there's an application for bail, who I will explain everything in detail. And then number seven, we have a petition or a complaint by Ruth Matthew to the Inspector General of Police, Abuja, which is dated in 2019, by O. Olori Ajay. Then item eight, handing over of arrest of arrested suspect Letter from 3 Battalion, rear to the IPO, Abramedi Division, 12-2-2020. Number 9, we have a statement of Triumph Ayo. Number 10, we have a statement of Triumph Ayo, under caution. Number 11, we have a statement of Ayo Emmanuel. Number 12, we have a statement of Ruth Matthew, under caution. Number 13, we have a statement of Pastor Andy Magada, under caution. Number 14, we have a statement of Miss Joy Edole, under caution. Number 15, we have a statement of Miss Juliet Matthew. Under caution. Number 16, we have a statement of Apostle Elijah. Under caution. Number 17, we have a voluntary statement of Prophet Jeremiah Omoto for fame. Dated 21-03-2020. Number 18, we have a voluntary statement from Ayo Joy. Mr. Ayo's daughter. Mr. Ayo's uh, daughter, yes. And any necessary or relevant document for the case or charge. So all of these statements put together, they are the ones that they are saying, they are constituting proof or evidence of this entire charge that is being laid on Sister Ruth Matthew. And most of you do not know the statements that were given by all these people that I have listed here. The statements of Jeremiah Omoto. No one knows the statement that Jeremiah Omoto gave, which I'm going to bring forth, and then we analyze it. For now, I want you to take screenshots. If you do not catch uh, the full summary or the, the calling out that I was doing on this document, take a screenshot of the first uh, uh, part of this document and take a screenshot of the second part of this document. Compile them. Just look at them and then analyze them so that you know where we are coming from and where we are going. So in summary, I'll break it down for you. We have a case of a missing child. Ruth Matthew went and reported the case to the police, and the police took interest in the case. They started working on the case. They started taking interest. They started investigating the case of the missing child. A day later, the police commissioner of police makes a U-turn and starts accusing Ruth Matthew after they had done their investigation, which we are not aware of, after they did their findings, which we are not aware of, I can tell you one thing for sure, there's no findings that they have. There's no investigation that was done. So after they contacted Jeremiah Omoto for fame, they changed their mouth. They started accusing Ruth Matthew as the suspect. They started focusing on Ruth Matthew as the suspect. That's how the whole case started. And they arrested Ruth and other people she accused. And eventually they were released. And again, they arrested Ruth again. Now they are taking her to court for defamation of character. And the commissioner of police that is actually challenging Ruth or that is actually suing Ruth today for defaming Jeremiah Omoto's character without proof of their investigation, we are coming for you. You have a lot to answer. I don't know if you took money from a motor for fame, but the sooner you return it and you do the right thing, the better. <laughs> because we are going to kick you open and we are going to expose you. The commissioner of police that is actually in charge of this case, be aware, be ready to dance. Because there are so many inconsistencies already in these documents or on this case. Because you claim to have done an investigation and you found out that Ruth Matthew was lying, you have evidence, you have proof, but the statement, the report is nowhere to be found in the court papers. The, the statement of your investigation is nowhere to be found. So what investigation did you do? Did you even inv investigate this case? Did you even ask for the CCTV footage? 
Did you even start a campaign to actually find out what happened to the child? Because if you did, there will be no reason for all these other witnesses. Your, your, your report alone, Mr. Commissioner, would have been enough to suffice to prove that Jeremiah Omoto is innocent. But your failure to provide the proof of your investigation, it's enough complacency to prove that you did not do any investigation. You only spoke with Jeremiah Omoto for fun, and he told you his side of the story and you believed it. And you forgot about the missing child. You cared less about the missing child. So before we dig deeper, before we break this commissioner of police open, let's look in the part two of the unveiling of the court papers or the court proceedings, which will show you the reason why Ruth Matthew is being tormented, harassed by the legal system in worry after she lost a child. She's the suspect. She's the one that is under the barrel of a gun. She's the one that is tiptoeing in court, in and out, while Jeremiah Omoto is there in his fish, in his fish pond, doing miracles with his fishes there. But we we'll get to the bottom of this. Every man, every soul connected or attached to this case who dance to the music. In part two, we are going to look at the charges that were laid or that are being laid on Ruth Matthew. In this coming month, she'll be back in court. Two witnesses have been brought forward already, Emmanuel Marcus and Juliet, and their testimonies were discarded because they were inconsistent. So now we're waiting for their other witnesses that are still coming to come and make their case and will always make reference to their initial statements and we'll see if they'll give the very same statements in the court. Why do they need witnesses if the commissioner of police actually have enough evidence or proof to show that Ruth Matthew or to show that Jeremiah Omoto is innocent? Why do they need all these witnesses? They are buying time. They are hoping and expecting that Ruth Matthew might not show up for the court so that she can be held in contempt so that this whole court case can be disrupted. But it's not going to happen. Sooner or later, we'll see who's going to have the, the last laugh. So bear with me. Let's flow, let's flow through this entire case. And uh, we'll do an analysis. We'll do a live broadcast. And I would like to hear what you think. If we do not quite get all the points or the entire document, revisit, rewind the video, go and screen much from where it started, Screen much, part, th part two and part three, and just see the full document. You'll get an understanding. It's very brief. It's very simple to understand. So till I meet you again on the next episode of the Enlightenment Series, this is Mr. Pull the Trigger. I'm out.